Hey guys, this is Bharatwaj with PhonoArena.com and this is the LG G Pad 8.3 Google Play Edition. LG was responsible for the Nexus 4 and more recently the Nexus 5 and their association with Google continues with the G Pad. This is the first ever tablet to be blessed by Google with the Play Edition, meaning the device will run stock Android without any modifications. With no bloatware and the latest version of Android, this is almost the Nexus 8 that never got announced. Priced at $349, should one prefer this over the Nexus 7 or is it the mini tablet to get? Let's find out in our review. LG has heavily invested in reducing the bezels on its products recently and it shows on the Gpad too. With thin bezels on the sides as well as the top and the bottom, the 8.3 inch device is surprisingly thin and light with appropriate dimensions even when packing a large screen. Measuring at 8.3mm of thickness and 338g of weight, the G-Pad is easily one of the most comfortable 8-inch tablets to use out there. The tablet's build is predominantly steel and glass, upping the premium quotient. The front is fully carved in glass and the back is adorned by a brushed stainless steel plate, but a rigid plastic frame acts as the pillar supporting the two parts. While the weight and the thickness help in better handling of the device, it still requires you to use both your hands for better support, as single-handed usage is near impossible with Android's UI lending no help either. But thankfully, the curved corners are suitable for making the single-handed reading much more comfortable. The front is again dominated by a single sheet of glass underneath which lies the 8.3-inch display. Above the display, we have the mediocre 1.3 megapixel front-facing camera and the LG logo right beside it. Over at the bottom, we have the microphone and the micro USB port, while there is a micro SD card slot and a 3.5mm headphones jack at the top. The left side is devoid of any controls or inputs, but we can see the clear demarcation between the stainless steel and the plastic layers here. Over at the right side, we have the volume rocker and the power lock switch, located near the top right corner which is quite hard to reach in single-handed usage. Moving over to the back, we have the 5MP rear camera at the top and the dual stereo speakers on the sides. We have the LG logo again in the middle, but that's about it, leaving much of the back to the brushed stainless steel design. The display is a 8.3 inch Full HD IPS LCD with a resolution of 1920 by 1200 and a pixel density of 273 ppi. It is crisp, has above average viewing angles and really great for watching videos generally. However, we did find the display to exhibit warmer whites than usual, a minor deterrent to an otherwise really good experience. This is very similar to what we saw on the Nexus 7 2013, but obviously less reflective and better at managing fingerprints than most tablets. There is a 5 megapixel camera on the back and a 1.3 megapixel camera on the front, both suited just for video calling and nothing more. The rear camera has autofocus and tends to take usable pictures in bright light, but we'd argue even the basic Lumia 520 can take better pictures than this. So the camera department is decidedly average, and nothing surprising about it as this is a tablet. The internals are powered by the Snapdragon 600 chipset with a quad-core 1.7 GHz processor and the Adreno 320 GPU for graphics. Driving a 1920x1200 display, the performance is very similar to what we found on the Nexus 7 2013 edition. Generally, the UI performance is fast and smooth, but not all the times, as the slowdowns tend to happen once in a while. But gaming performance has been generally good. We tested out some high-end games on the device and found them to run decently well, but the graphics were low resolution owing to the high resolution screen and hence the overall quality took a hit. We also ran synthetic benchmarks to see it perform very similarly to the Nexus 7 2013 in GPU tests and lesser than the same in CPU intensive tests. Overall the performance is decent for the price it comes at, but with it closely resembling the Nexus 7, the obvious advantage is missing here. The tablet comes with 2GB of RAM, so multitasking is not much of an issue as it has more than 1GB of RAM free out of the usable 1.7GB of RAM on regular use. Storage-wise, we have the 16GB variant with around 12.57GB of user-available storage, which along with a microSD expansion slot can serve you pretty well. Connectivity-wise, apart from the usual suspects, the tablet also supports the USB OTG capability with which we had connected the PS3 controller for gaming use. Media playback is great on the Gpad 8.3 thanks to the large 16x10 screen and the vibrant colors, but the loudspeakers were too muffled and not loud enough to be worthy of a mention. They should have been definitely better. On the media app side, the Play Store is full of apps that can play any format you throw at it, so that's covered, and you always have ample amounts of space thanks to the expansion slot. 
So in case you're looking for a media centric device, the GPad is definitely capable. Coming to the software, as we repeatedly mentioned, the GPad 8.3 we have here is a Google Play Edition device. So there are almost zero enhancements or modifications done to the device. We have got the pure unadulterated version of Android 4.4.2 KitKat out of the box, which includes various improvements under the hood as well as minor user interface changes. It notably brings the immersive mode, better printing support and overall a consistent design language to the default apps and the new Google apps. Talking of Google apps, the major changes like the Google search launcher or the intuitive dialer are missing from the tablet. So the effect of actually using Android 4.4 almost remains marginally better than say 4.2. But the idea of getting the latest updates without any intervention is the biggest USP of all the Play Edition devices. As a downside though, all the useful features of the GPad 8.3's original edition like knock-on, Q-slide, Q-pair, all LG's additions are all but missing on the Google Play edition. When it comes to the interface or the apps, the Android tablets are meant to be used as a phone in portrait rather than as a tablet with appropriately scaled UIs. While the scaling and adaptive information on a large screen is prevalent everywhere, the actual optimization of screen space through information density is missing and is still a big gaping hole left by Android and Android developers. There are not enough tablet apps and even the good ones aren't optimized that well. Even default Google apps don't utilize the full screen real estate like for example Gmail which refuses to have a dual column layout or YouTube which shows very huge thumbnails in portrait when it can easily show two. The list goes on and the work is yet to be done. So apps wise, the iPad mini is still the undisputed leader and even the Windows 8 inch tablets have a better user interface experience for touch than Android. So Google better get the usable interfaces of Honeycomb and ICS back or at least release a usable launcher for tablets. Coming to battery life, the GPad comes with a 4600 mAh lithium polymer battery which can last for days on on-off usage of the tablet. We had used it extensively for media consumption and reading and the battery stayed on for around 5 days in independent on-off usage. In the end, the LG GPad 8.3 comes off as a really well-built 8-inch Android tablet that does not offer much as an advantage over the Nexus 7 2013. With nearly exactly the same specifications, it is very hard to recommend a stock Android tablet over the Nexus or the feature-rich custom skinned counterpart. But if you want a bigger screen and arguably better build quality than the Nexus, go for the GPad. But if you just want a mini tablet at this price range, better go for the iPad mini Retina which is just $50 more and has a lot more apps. And well, that's all for our video review. Do check out our full review at the blog, phonearena.com slash blog and let us know what you think in the comment section below. We hope you liked this video. If you did, do hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more reviews like these. Thanks for watching.